London's air is cleaner than at any point in the city's history, with levels of suspended particulate matter 98% lower than they were a century ago. And yet, Little Man Khan claims that air pollution is directly killing as many as 4,000 Londoners every year. People are struggling enough as it is. The last thing they need is Little Man Khan shaking them down for the crime of driving to work. That is why as mayor, I'll abolish ULES and remove and auction off all the ULES infrastructure. No other candidate is prepared to do this. You have to wonder why that is. So I got this mail from my door recently. Stand up to woke. Vote Amy Gallagher. And it's one of the many, I guess, campaign posters in this little booklet that I've got. Leading up to the election of the next mayor of London, which is on May 2nd. Now, I know you guys love me talking about UK politics so much. My last video did so well that I'm just going to do it again. But seriously, I just wanted to talk about this because the elections in this country are always weird. The mayor's election is always weird in London. And I just want to talk about how American culture is being imported. And I found this Reddit comment on the London subreddit, and I think it sums up why I found this interesting. So David is dead 91 said, as a first time voter for London Mayor, having moved here recently, I found the pamphlet, the one I've just shown you, a breath of fresh air in that the candidates don't hold back in their craziness. There's something strangely comforting about reading the mini manifesto for the stand up to woke woman, knowing that she'll never get the majority vote adds a bit of color to the whole thing. And I think it sums up perfectly because yeah, a lot of these people just say the most like batshit stuff. And that stand up to woke thing is a symbol of a larger problem we have in the UK in just copying every stupid thing from the US. So we're going to read that person's manifesto. What I do find interesting in this leaflet, we have her like poster, we have a poster for the Conservatives, and we have a poster for Reform UK, which is like an even more right wing version of the Conservatives. And we have a poster for the Britain First candidate. They should all just like run on one ticket because they're virtually indistinguishable from each other. It's just that some of them are more explicit than others. So it appears they all do have some ideological similarities. And of course you get like the random people running for mayor of London. So we've had like Lawrence Fox in recent elections. You have like Brian Rose, that YouTube crypto bro who always runs, but he didn't have a manifesto in this leaflet. Obviously you have the most famous one who always runs, Count Binface, um, who you think would be the most insane candidate running but he's probably one of the more rational ones and i just kind of want to talk about the context of this election because it often gets a lot of national attention and sadiq khan our current mayor he often gets a lot of criticism because of the general problems in the country caused by the conservative government over you know the past decade or so and i do have criticisms for sadiq khan as a politician and ideologically i don't think we agree on everything. And I'd say for a mayor of London, passing stuff that actually does make people's lives a bit easier is like what I'd really rate it on because you don't have loads and loads of power to change the city overnight. So with Sadiq Khan in the past, Ken Livingston, if you introduce like certain policies that will be around for a long time and make people's lives better in the city, like with Red Ken and like the Oyster Card and stuff, then I'd say you're doing like an okay job. And Sadiq Khan does have a few of these policies that I think will be his legacy. But of course, a lot of the hate directed towards him is, I guess, through a misunderstanding of what his role is as the mayor of London. He's not the king of London. And also, yeah, lots and lots of racism directed against him because he's a Muslim. And he's got a lot of this throughout his terms in office because, yeah, Muslim mayor of London, all the conspiracy theories about Islamists taking over the UK, which is what, Sadiq Khan gets called a lot of the time. But yeah, if you have someone in your life who really hates Sadiq Khan, like ask them why. It's probably about ULEZ or racism. And often those things go absolutely hand in hand. So we're going to go through some of the candidates today and talk about them. And like I said, these videos don't traditionally do very well because, you know, I didn't make my YouTube career off talking about UK politics. So if you want to support the channel, support me making videos like this, consider becoming a patron and you can also get access to the Discord server and also follow me on social media. Not really on Twitter anymore, but Freds and Blue Sky for text-based social media. And my travel and personal Instagrams are where I'm probably most active. 
So go check all of those things out. So before we talk about like the more insane candidates, I just have to frame like the whole election. Like what are the main issues? And what makes like London mayoral election so boring is that everyone knows London has the same problems, right? So most of these candidates pay lip service to having solutions to similar problems. So I guess something everyone can agree on uh, we need better public housing. Obviously, like in many elections in cities, crime is a big one. And the solution to tackling crime obviously differs a lot with competing ideologies. Like a lot of people are saying, unleash the police, free the police from wokeness to like, I don't know, brutalize London's minorities, where obviously a lot of people on the left are like, yeah, Tory cuts to public services from the actual government over a decade have really destroyed like youth services, mental health services, all this stuff, which contribute to crime. So we're going to have to fund that more. And also a big one you're going to see, and it's probably like, this is what the election's based on, is something called ULEZ. Now, ULEZ has been controversial, and it's honestly so stupid that the Tories have positioned themselves in this culture war as like they're for like your independence, your freedom, your liberty, because they support you owning a car which emits as much pollution as possible. And what's even more like stupid is that Keith Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party in Parliament, he jumped on this coming out against Sadiq Khan basically because he is so spineless he tries to jump on every right-wing position to try and appeal to Tory voters. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I'm going to outline it for you on a recent study. So London, ULEZ averts more air pollution than caused by Capital's airports. So ULEZ policies are about tagging pollution um, and cover the whole of Greater London at the moment. And motorists must pay £12.50 a day to drive a non-compliant car, typically a diesel more than seven years old or a petrol car more than 17 years old in the ULEZ zones, which covered a small central zone when launched in 2019 and was expanded to inner boroughs in 2021. So a recent report found that ULEZ and the pre-existing low emission zones for HGVs reduce road traffic particulate matter emissions by 180 tonnes across London over three years, a cut exceeding the particulate pollution produced by rail and river transport and agriculture combined. In an article from five months ago, ULEZ expansion, 45% fewer dirty vehicles now on London's roads, says TfL. So this action by Sadiq Khan was taken because like multiple studies found that London is one of the worst cities in Europe for air pollution. And basically part of improving the air's quality is taking older cars off the road. So basically, if you didn't understand what I was reading there, it's just like a zone in London where you have to pay this certain amount of money if you get tracked by the ULEZ cameras, if you're driving basically an older car. So my car is like a 2011 model and it meets all the requirements. So I can still drive my car, absolutely no problem. Most people will be able to, but you do get a few people falling through the cracks. And I did actually launch a grant. So um, every Londoner with a non ULEZ compliant car will be eligible for a 2000 pound grant. Now I will admit you obviously do get situations where this policy is going to negatively impact people, maybe people who collect older cars, or maybe someone who just has an old car um, that they've had for a long time. And I have an example on the London subreddit of someone who'll be like negatively affected. You would say the ULEZ policies don't benefit this person particularly, but I would say it's the outlier here, but they say, I have a perfectly good Toyota that I have to get rid of, not by choice. Somehow decent ULEZ compliant car will cost me 5k and upwards. I live right on the edge of the M25, maybe a 10 minute walk from the new ULEZ border, but 90% of my driving is inside the zone. I work inside the zone and shop inside the zone, so a lot of my money stays inside the zone. Unfortunately, my address is just outside London, so I'm excluded from the scrappage scheme. If I could get 2k scrappage, then I would still have to pocket out an additional 3k. It still hurts, but not as much as having to splash out the whole 5k, especially with money being more expensive now. So that's what bothers me. Otherwise, I am all in for better air quality. And I'm sure a lot of people in the comments, if you're from London, You'll have examples of people, maybe you know, maybe yourself of, you know, you might be like this person who live outside London, but do most of your driving in London, so you don't get the 2K. But even if you did get the 2K, you know, you still have to buy like a newer car, which might cost more than that and stuff. But yeah, obviously I get there's going to be people negatively affected by this, but at the same time, not an individualist, I will see that, yes, this benefits London because it's about the air we breathe which negatively impacts people's health, which can eventually lead to their death or health conditions that can lead to a lot of problems. So it's worth it in the long run. And I think I saw polling that over like 50% of Londoners 
support this anyway. But it's led rise to a lot of conspiracy theorists, all that shit about 15 minute cities, people calling themselves the Blade Runners will cut down ULES cameras and stuff. And it always makes me laugh so much how misdirected conspiracy theory anger is like they think Sadiq Khan is like some dictator who wants to track them and box them into the 15 minute cities not that he's trying to improve the quality of life in London and put more money into public transport so we actually don't have to use cars in London anymore wouldn't that be nice that is the main thing you'll keep seeing in these campaign promises they'll be talking about ULEZ consistently and it's really pandering to these far-right conspiracy theorists. I know that might sound dumb, but so many of the conspiracy theories I've seen in the British far-right literally revolve around this one thing. So now I got my little book, we're gonna get into the candidates, and I wanna focus on this one probably the most. From the Social Democratic Party, which I have never heard of in my life, like a lot of people running for mayor, I have never heard of their parties ever. So Amy Gallagher, Social Democratic Party, on this nice brief thing, it says, stand up to woke. Don't divide us, all woke, and DEI programs will be stopped. Now, I will tell you for a fact, most people in the UK will not know what DEI means because they're not on American political Twitter 24-7. I bet if you polled most of the UK, do you know what DEI means? They would say no. Because it's something that the right wing in America and Elon Musk bangs on about, but I will serve all Londoners equally with a colorblind policy. People will be judged on their character, not their skin color. I will protect religious freedoms, women's sex-based rights, and gay rights. No more identity politics. Our spaces should be for everyone. Make criminals scared again. We need proper policing. A zero tolerance approach to both knife crime and gang violence and increase stop and search powers. I will depoliticize the police. Political correctness should not interfere with law and order. We will police with strength and fairness, treating all equally without fear, privilege or favour. Stop ULEZ. Start 24-hour travel. Travel freely. Make public transport pleasant, civil and orderly. We need reliable, regular and safe public transport. I will end ULEZ and LTNs and the war on cars. I will depoliticise London's transport system and stop woke messaging. Don't know how that's relevant to this. I will crack down on antisocial behaviour on tubes, trains and buses. Build houses, build beautiful, increasing housing, reducing rents. Our London plan will create a smart, green, tech-focused, democratic 24-hour city. It will back new infrastructure, beautiful architecture, and industrial renaissance. I will confront the challenges of mass immigration head-on. I will put London's workers and citizens first, not the other way around. So I'm not on Twitter as much as I was, but I do believe this person is like somewhat noteworthy in like turf right wing adjacent um twitter sphere but at the same time like i was saying to you there's certain things you can't say that you're against if you're running for london mayor so she's talking about like reducing rent and creating new homes right this person doesn't want to do that <laughs> basically this person is pretty much just your typical american republican like think of everything i just read you you've heard a republican politician say that like a million times i've never really heard of the social democratic party Seems like a Christian thing, maybe, but let's go on to her Twitter and let's go on to her campaign website as well, uh, just to get a better look into this person standing up to woke. So if we go on her Twitter, she has less Twitter followers than me, so that should already disqualify her from ever being um, the mayor of London. Obviously, she has an interview with Andy No as well, talking about fighting back against woke ideology, which is obviously at the forefront of every Londoner's top priorities has another conference with her with Lawrence Fox, obviously campaigning against like gender ideology, like typical right-wing shit you see on Twitter, right? This person thinks getting a few retweets on Twitter means she should run for London Mayor. So if we go onto her campaign page, stand up to woke, Sadiq Khan has wasted so much money on virtue signaling nonsense while neglecting the needs of Londoners. As SDP Mayor, we will stand up to the woke, she will fight the woke dogma that is destroying London's industries, culture, and atmosphere. Defund woke and political correctness. The SDP will stop all woke and diversity, equity, and inclusion spending and save you money. No more LGBTQ plus rainbow flags, BLM groups, May propaganda films. <laughs> the function of the mayor is to make London's transport, policing, environment, and housing all work for you. Police, on police, she has stuff like free the police from political correctness. 
will increase stop and search powers and free the Met to tackle knife crime on the basis of operational evidence. And also important, at the end, what is a woman? The SDP know what a woman is, biology is real, and the SDP will protect women's faces from encroachment by biological males. So yeah, this person has no hope in hell in winning or even doing significantly well. And you know, the anti-diversity shit might play well with certain elements of London, but it's like a very, very diverse city. This plays well with people who don't live in London. But if you grow up in London, it's just such a normal part of growing up, especially if you're like my age. You don't remember when it wasn't like that. Like, you know, I'm wearing my Brentford shirt. I'm from West London, West London, from an Irish migrant community. I went to Catholic school, plenty of Polish people, plenty of South Asians, Africans. You know, around Brentford, where I went to school, and has pretty notable migrant communities of like every description, really. Obviously, probably most famous for having a South Asian community. But in recent decades, Polish, historically Irish, when my grandparents came over, they moved around Brentford and stuff. So when you're attacking things like diversity, that's just gonna turn like most Londoners off because we're used to living in a globalized city and we don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. I know I definitely don't. And I know a lot of people around the world, especially in the West who live in globalized cities, people in New York probably relate to this as well. It's not a bad thing. And it's safe to say the city who's going to elect a Pakistani English Muslim mayor probably for the third time. If this is your message, it's not much of a vote winner. It might get you some sort of like, I don't know, right wing grift eventually. So let's move on to the next one of just bizarre candidates. So I'll give this guy credit. Um, this poster is actually a lot better than some of the others. Like it sticks out, like the color scheme's all right. Um, so Andreas Vermeer, Andreas Mitchley, make London strong. So he talks about enacting radical reforms to fix our broken police empower Londoners to take control of their health, abolish ULEZ and get a handle on the TfL's finances, homes, build strong, build plenty, build beautiful, reduce City Hall's share of council tax and combat air pollution without penalising the public. Andrea saying, London is a sick city. Every week, parents bury their children. The police are incapable of enforcing the law and nobody respects them. Our transport infrastructure, once iconic, is collapsing. New housing isn't built to last and looks like prison cell blocks. We are leaderless and no other candidate is prepared to make to do what is necessary to make London strong. I am. Now, like most of you, I don't know who the hell this person was, so I just looked him up quick before I made this video. Uh, gym owner Andreas Mitchley stands as London mayoral candidate and um, the independent candidate says he was driven to run in the election after he was radicalised by the lockdown. He was fined for attempting to keep his North London gym open during lockdown, but this was overturned in court. 37-year-old told the BBC that he disagreed with the lockdown rules and the raft of deeply unpopular policies being foisted upon the population, like Ulez. And if I go on his Twitter, I am the man the establishment do not want you voting for, doing lots of podcasts on places like Rumble, put out like a few ads and he constantly talks about like Sadiq Khan being a little man and playing up how, you know, he's big, strong, muscly gym man. In a row, little man Khan has increased City Hall's share of council tax. This means that Londoners living in your average band D home are now paying £200 more than when Little Man Khan was first elected in 2016. If I'm elected in May, I pledge to reduce City Hall's share of council tax over my four year term. I'll pay for this by cutting the number of non essential staff at the mayor's office and scrapping all of Little Man Khan's expensive pet projects. People are struggling enough as it is. The last thing they need is Little Man Khan shaking them down for the crime of driving to work. That is why as mayor, I'll abolish ULEZ and remove and auction off all the ULEZ infrastructure. No other candidate is prepared to do this. You have to wonder why that is. Diving into the Thames as well, which I probably wouldn't recommend for most people. This guy falls into the category of, I don't know if he's just really delusional and thinks he can become mayor or if this is some sort of grift. Like he has like 500 Twitter followers. I guess he got a headline written about him after he became sort of infamous for the lockdown stuff. But you can see that a lot of these people just play into conspiracy theories. So this guy's famous for the lockdown, talking about gyms and health and everything like that. And of course, ULEZ as well. They're all talking about ULEZ and how they want to get rid of it, while at the same time talking about making the environment better. I don't understand how these are compatible. Letting every single car drive about London as much as possible, polluting London, and apparently you care about the environment. It's just like one of these policies, you've got to take a stance on it. Do you support it? Do you not? And they think the populist position is to go against it when polling shows it pretty much is the popular position to support it. And Sadiq Khan is like fairly popular. 
as a London mayor. So um, now let's get on to just like the outright fascists. So Britain's first is our far right party. So uh, Britain first, Nick Scanlon. A message from Britain first candidate, Nick Scanlon. Dear voter, London is fast becoming a third world cesspit where crime is rampant and radical Islamist extremists dominate the streets. Homelessness has increased along with food bank usage, but spending on woke nonsense has exploded. The reality is we are running out of time to save and restore our, blo our beloved capital city. What was once a safe and cohesive city has been transformed into a crime-ridden, unrecognisable disaster zone. If you want to change it, vote for it. On Thursday, vote Britain first. No to immigration. So lots of testimony from like random people. Annabelle says, I've had enough of our people being treated like second-class citizens in our own land. And this person's wearing like a Burnley top. So I'm already doubting if they're even from London. Like, sure, they could maybe be a migrant to London from Burnley, but it's not looking good. Uh, I am sick of watching our elderly freeze in winter while wasting billions on migrant hotels. Thomas, David, the Met Police is too woke. <laughs> they should end hate marches and protect our monuments. Oh my God, a Britain's first talking head talking about ending hate marches. That would reduce like, all of your support. I've had enough of being charged for driving into my own city. Scrap the ULEs and sea charge. Tony. Uh, and their policies are abolish ULEs. Put local people first. Housing for local families. Protect our monuments. Deport illegal immigrants. House homeless veterans. Close down migrant hotels. Reject corruption. Stop mass immigration. And depoliticize the Met Police. So Britain first are already a joke. And any relevance electorally the far right have had in Britain has really been mitigated by the Tory party basically becoming the far-right party. Um, so it's a bit of a joke, really. Talking about Londoners rejecting immigration, like a city that has been built on immigration since forever. So many people here are descended from migrants. People descended from immigrants largely don't vote for anti-immigrant parties. We also don't believe the Met Police is woke. They're not woke. Like, sure, do the Met Police engage in liberal identity politics? Yes. Are the Met Police institutionally racist? Yes, they're not woke at all. So before we go into the Conservative candidate, who's the only relevant one here apart from Sadiq Khan, I want to look at one other, just finding it in my book, from a party called Reform UK. It's basically like a more right-wing version of the Tory party at this point. So um, Howard Cox for London Mayor. Their manifesto says, Scrap all of ULEs. I will scrap the charges for the whole of London and remove the cameras. Refund the ULEZ fees. I will refund the expansion fees and fines received since the 29th of August. Remove 20 mile an hour zones. I will remove 20 miles per hour zones, needless road restrictions and pinch points, floating bus stops and excessively wide cycle lanes. <laughs> it's just like, what is your policy? I'll, I don't know. Making London more dangerous for everyone. Uh, if you guys don't know, a lot of London has replaced its 30 miles an hour zones with 20 miles per hour zones. And personally, like, I don't mind it because what always happens anyway is people go faster than the speed limit. So in the past, you'd have 30 miles per hour and people would go 40 miles per hour, which is way too fast for residential lanes. But now it's 20 miles an hour and the fastest people usually go is like the old 30 miles per hour. And it just feels like it's overall safer. And also talking about making cycle lanes uh, smaller because yeah as we all know cyclists are very safe in london you'd think the priority would be the other way in that he'd want to make london safer for cyclists again it's this right wing culture war they're siding with uh, car users uh, triple the bobbies on the beat i will make london streets and public transport especially the underground safer i will triple affordable housing and i will defend our shared history culture and values and commission a significant memorial to queen elizabeth ii really happy he did that but we do have someone who won't be a challenge but you know, in theory could win. And that is Susan Hall, who is the Conservative candidate for the Mayor of London. Now, of course, Boris Johnson was the last Mayor of London. So we have had a Tory Mayor before, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. The Tories are very, very unpopular. Labour are basically going to win the next election by default. So I don't see this going anywhere because although there are a lot of problems in London... A lot of them obviously also go back to the Tory government in London itself, not just Sadiq Khan. But Suzanne writing, London was once a great place to live, but for too many people, it started to become unaffordable. Why is that, Susan? Could it be your party's 
government doing that. Too many parents lie awake worried about their children's safety. Too many drivers are struggling to make ends meet because of the new driving charges introduced at the worst possible time. Too many young people are having to choose between starting a family and leaving the city they call home because tower blocks are being prioritized over building affordable family homes. I don't know why a family home can't be a tower block. The pro problem is Londoners like these aren't being listened to. Rising crime, rising cost of living, rising house prices. These are the issues that keep Londoners up at night, all caused by the Conservative government. That's why London needs a mayor who comes from the same party who calls all your problems. So yeah, pretty standard stuff about affordable family homes, empowering the police, scrapping ULEZ, of course. So the typical shit you expect from every right-wing candidate. Although, yeah, she's a Tory. Like I said, all of these problems are basically caused or at least exacerbated by your own party in charge of the government right now. I don't think you're going to be rewarded for that shit show. And like I said, all of these right wing candidates should just combine into one if they want any chance at winning because ideologically they share a lot of similarities. Now, if you just type in Susan Hall and just look for headlines, it's not very flattering. Susan Hall pledges to scrap universal primary school free meals. Susan Hall doesn't know what a London bus ride costs, how much police are paid, or who owns Hammersmith Bridge. Here's the big one. Tory London Mayor candidate liked tweets praising Enoch Powell. Susan Hall, the Conservative candidate for London Mayor, has liked tweets praising Enoch Powell, as well as some containing Islamophobic abuse towards Sadiq Khan. Research by a campaign group has shown. In February 2020, Hall liked a message on Twitter praising Powell, a former Conservative minister who became a byword for racism in the UK after his notorious 1968 speech, which warned that immigration would lead to rivers of blood. Tweet uncovered by Hope Not Hate depicted Powell with the words, it's never too late to get London back, an apparent reference to the city's multiculturalism. She has hard right views and has strong support for Donald Trump and Liz Truss. Last month, she was criticized for saying the dangerous Notting Hill Carnival should be moved and claiming there was a problem with crime in the black community. In another tweet, Hall seemingly endorsed Trump's basis conspiracy theory that he lost the presidential election in 2020 because of voter fraud. In January 2019, she retweeted a message from the far-right activist Katie Hopkins that called Sadiq Khan the nipple height mayor of Londonistan, adding, thank you, Katie. So like I said, the Social Democratic Party, Britain's First, and the Conservative Party and Reform UK should just run one candidate, one unity candidate, because yeah, everyone now in the right wing in the UK is basically like an outright fascist. And that is a trend you see in American politics as well, where stuff that used to be seen as fringe, like I'm old enough to remember in like 2015, 2016, You'd see stuff with like Nigel Farage, Donald Trump. You'd see stuff with like these far right parties around Europe and people be like, oh yeah, they're fascists, aren't they? They do not represent the views of these good Western democracies where we have conservative and Labour parties. But we'd never be like those far right parties. But basically what happened is those far right elements just got absorbed by the mainstream right wing parties across Europe or those fringe parties actually took power in places like Italy or the Netherlands. So now this is all just like normal, right? Fascists just have power. We just have to accept it. And it's no surprise in the London election, we're getting loads of these types running, trying to be the mayor of London. So yeah, you're never going to get fascists getting elected over someone who's like center left like Sadiq Khan and comes from a background that is relatable to a lot of people in London. But you'd much rather someone who understands that experience, understands what it's like to come from a working class background and has actually done stuff to improve London, whether or not you really like him. Like personally, I don't politically agree with Sadiq Khan on lots and lots of things. But like I said, with the mayor of London, my expectations are relatively in check because I'd realize he's not the king of London. So if they implement decent policies, which improve our lives somewhat, that's good enough for me to want them to be mayor over some of these candidates, just all putting out the cookie cutter stuff about affordable housing. Now that's not to say Sadiq Khan is perfect. That's not to say I wouldn't rather Jeremy Corbyn be the mayor of London and have someone for a more like radical socialist vision and do things in a more radical way which would help the city for a long time. But at the same time, if it's Sadiq Khan against every candidate I've mentioned, then yeah, obviously I'm going to choose him. And I hope with the support of a Labour government, a right-wing Labour government I hate, but a Labour government nonetheless, hopefully in his next term, he can continue to do things that benefit Londoners and just make the city generally better. I'm pretty doom appealed in politics. I'm not expecting miracles. My expectations for anyone in capitalist electoral politics, especially like Mayor of London, is very, very low. So this election, consequential for Londoners, most of you won't be impacted by it at all. But if you made it this far and you're not from England at all, 
respect you sitting through all this hope you learned something and that is it for the video let me know what you guys think down in the comments and if you made it this far thank you for watching